Darja Mail is on the line with us. He's the investigative journalist and staff writer with Truthout, truthout.org, where you will find my writings uh, pretty much every day and, and two of my books, actually, in their entirety published over there. Uh, Dar, welcome back to the program. Thanks, Tom. Good to be with you. Great to have you. Uh, Twitter, by the way, at Darja Mail, D-A-H-R-J-A-M-A-I-L. Um, you wrote a brilliant piece, The Methane Monster Roars. I'm, I'm assuming you're familiar with the... Uh, the little 10 minute video that Leonardo DiCaprio and I did about uh, called last hours about uh, the, you know, what could happen if the Arctic methane goes. Definitely. Yeah. I've seen that Tom. Yeah. It's, it's uh, your, your article so well captures that and even goes several steps beyond that. You want to just give our, our viewers and listeners a, a, a snapshot of, of basically what you're saying, what you're hearing and, uh, and what the current state of science is on this. There is a massive amount of methane trapped in Arctic ice, both in the form of on-land permafrost as well as on the the shallow uh, continental shelves on the north coast of the Arctic, um, and a, a vast amount of that specifically in the uh, eastern Siberian Arctic uh, shelf. And so uh, I, I interviewed several scientists who were on the leading edge of studying uh, what is the situation with the methane? How 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 much release has happened? How much is continuing to happen? And what might happen? And uh, in short, the the news is not good. I mean, we've we've known now uh, consistently since the mid to mid two thousands, around two thousand five, six, seven, that um, uh, an inordinate amount of methane is starting to release from the Arctic because of warming from climate change, both on land and in the in the water and the, the melting of the hydrates underneath the water and releasing more and more methane. And what I found was uh, uh, specifically Natalia Shikova basically talked about, she's with the um, University of Alaska Fairbanks International Arctic Research Center, and she's been studying the eastern Antarctic, uh, I'm sorry, the, the uh, eastern Siberian uh, Arctic shelf for over 10 years. And she said, look, we have uh, more methane now and we've been recording to date being released over a wider area. And she's concerned about the possibility of a uh, up to what a 50 gigaton methane burp, uh, which means a vast amount of uh, methane that's currently frozen uh, either underwater or on land releasing all at once. That this, this could, she said, this could literally happen at any moment and in just a matter of, of literally minutes. And that would add an amount of carbon, um, keeping in mind this is methane, which is intensely more powerful of a greenhouse gas than is carbon, 100 times more powerful on a 20-year time skill, scale and still 22 t- times more powerful than CO2 on a 100-year time scale. And so a 50 gigaton burp of methane would release uh, more carbon at, at once into the atmosphere than has been released since the beginning of the Industrial Revolution. And it would have the impact of 5,000 gigatons of of carbon dioxide, and we've only put about 1,700 gigatons into the air since the Industrial Revolution, if my recollection of the numbers are correct. Correct me if I'm wrong, please. That that is right. Yeah, I think the last estimate I saw of total CO2 gigatons was 1,475, but that could be a little... Uh, a little, little low, a little out of date, but bear, either way, we're talking about whatever that is, you know, three times ish, uh, 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 the amount of carbon all at once dumped in. And that against the context of just the amount of methane parts per million that we've, we've, we've already released into the atmosphere, uh, which we've, we've raised the level of 0.7 ppm up to 1.7 ppm of methane in the atmosphere that just with that scientists are warning of a five to six degree C temperature increase globally just from that, not even talking about the new methane that's being released and, and certainly not talking about uh, what what they're fearing could be released. Yeah. Um, wow. Wow. The, the, the big, well, let, uh, two things I want to talk about. The first is that this could be the thing that produces a tipping point, a flipping point where there's sudden climate change, which has been virtually absent from the conversation. And I'd like you to talk about that. But the but I wanted to share something really with you really quickly where I've found it really interesting. I I, literally these are conversations I have with cab drivers here in Washington, D.C., where they say, why is it so friggin cold here? This is you know, I've lived here 50 years. It's never this cold this time of year, blah, 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 blah. And and what I say is that 
the 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 jet stream, this giant wall of air, this river of air up, you know, just south of the Arctic, used to keep the Arctic air in the Arctic and the more temperate air, you know, where we are in the more temperate zones. And that because the Arctic is warming, uh, depending on whose numbers you're using, anywhere from three to ten times faster, I think six times faster is the, the most common number I see, although you, you, you're you more up to date on the most recent science on this. Because the o- Arctic is warming faster than we are here in Washington, D.C., that river of air, that jet stream, is losing its effectiveness, because it, its potency, because the temperature gradient is what creates it, the temperature differential. And because the temperatures are becoming less separated and closer together, the jet stream is getting weaker. And so now it's drooling down, and the only thing that's stopping it are the Rocky Mountains. And so we get it east of the Rocky Mountains. They don't get it in California because of the Rocky Mountains going up through Alaska. And this could be the new normal. And and get ready. I mean, and, and, and what's even worse is that after that cold Arctic air comes down here to Washington, D.C. for a couple of months, it goes back to the Arctic and it takes our heat with it, which further amplifies this heating process. What do you think? Exactly. No, extremely well, well articulated as to that phenomena, you know, and it's 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 been being, uh, I think, misreported called what well, really mistermed, I should say, the Arctic vortex and this sort of stuff in the mainstream media, who, of course, uh, gen- in general, consistently uh, refuses to tie it directly to climate change, all those scientific reports and leading climate scientists are already doing exactly that. And, and it's happening because of exactly as you just described. That's why we, we saw what happened the winter that hit the Midwest and the Northeastern U.S. last year. What's happening right now, literally as we speak, both here and you look at what's happening in the U.K., they're getting absolutely hammered on a regular basis, also in the same two years. And this is the new normal. This isn't an anomaly. It's, it's, it's certainly aberrant. Uh, it's, it's a new phenomena. Uh, in human geologic terms, but it's, it's, I'm sorry, human time scale terms, not, not geologic, because, you know, what you mentioned earlier about uh, abrupt climate change, um, Paul Beckwith, who's a climatology and meteorology, meteorology professor and a specialist in, in paleoclimatological records at University of Ottawa in Canada, he, he said, look, we, we are looking at, he, he says we are already in the very beginning stages of, of what he calls abrupt climate change, where, we could look at that five to six degree C that we've been talking about from methane or from other factors. He said we could be looking at that in the next 10 to 20 years. But that said, what's also interesting is talking about abrupt climate change is even the International Energy Agency, which is a conservative, very conservative energy agency, their most recent predictions are calling for a possible five to six degree C uh, t- global temperature increase by 2050. So we're starting to see um, now a trend where the abrupt climate change predictions and even even conservative predictions from a group like the, the International Energy Agency. The World Bank is are, saying it now, too. Them, too, are all kind of starting to coalesce. And, and so now what's being left in the dust is the, uh, the, the worst case predictions for the International Panel on Climate Change calling for a maximum 5C increase by 2100. They're being left in the dust. Yeah, 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 absolutely. This is serious, serious stuff, and we need to cut through this Republican obstructionism and denialism. Um, this is uh, arguably worse than Holocaust denialism because we're talking about the entire human race. It's it's amazing. Dar Jamail, truthout.org. Thank you, Dar. Thanks a lot, Tom. Keep up the great work, my friend.